you want to invoke somebody, you cannot just ask for a favor. You have to demonstrate that you you ha- you, you have something to give back. Business of Architecture UK, episode seventy one. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host Ryan Willard, and this podcast is actually the second part of my conversation with Gian Piero Venturini of Iterant Office. So sit back, relax, and if you haven't listened to the first part already, go and check it out and uh, enjoy my conversation with Gian Piero Venturini. So massive thank you to all of you for listening and supporting the Business of Architecture UK for the last couple of years. Big shout out to those of you who have come to our live events, attended the webinars, and of course to those of you who have downloaded the weekly podcast and have been listening to them on your bicycles. And as you know, we love helping architects win meaningful and profitable work. But it's not always that simple to implement these ideas or translate them into something that will work for you. So what I wanted to do was to invite you onto a quick 15 minute chat with myself we can both grab a cup of tea and I'd like to ask you about what content you found most valuable and why and what you'd like to hear more of and I'd also love to hear more about your business and what you're building at the moment and where you are headed to business wise in 2020 so there's no charge or any obligation with this call just simply to find out how our content has been of value and if we get that far and with your permission of course what might be next what what might be possible and how Business of Architecture UK could be supportive of that. Does that sound fair? Brilliant. So if you want to book a 15-minute chat with me, I'm calling these calls the BOA UK Discovery Call or just simply a chat with Ryan. Use the link in the information and I look forward to speaking to you. So, so, and then this is, this is really interesting as well because you're, you're operating in, on the one hand as, as doing a lot of research, a lot of collaborative projects. You're plugging into other disciplines, you're sort of straddling different activities. Um, and lots of young architecture practices that I speak to as well um, want to be, you know, either they want to pursue a, a certain kind of research that they've been developing at university, they want to test out new ideas. We know that the commercial world of architectural building and construction can be very slow to adopt ideas, particularly if you've say got a lack of experience or you're fresh you know you're, you're bubbling of ideas but to get those ideas actually into the hands of a developer or a contractor can take a lot of time so you know doing your own research is very very important and also of a lot of interest to a lot of architects so from your personal experience of talking to lots of architects who are kind of operating in this new way as well and your own personal experience of running into an office how do you make it operate commercially? What are the obstacles that you face and how have you made it work? And, and how, have you, how have you seen other practices make it work? Uh, sorry, what do you mean commercially? Like how do you... Uh, how do you make money? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good question. Uh, <laughs> So, so uh, one of, for instance, a few a few months ago, uh, in, we have uh, setting up a series of uh, a series of workshops with emerging architects uh, called uh, uh, survive style, surviving style, something like that. Which right. uh, how do you how do you survive? How do you get the end of the month? Let's say, and the, and the main question was that how how do how do you do money? How do you get money? Um, I think that um, well. In my specific case, um, I would say that uh, the beginning was uh, very difficult. As I mentioned, uh, you start your own research, and then uh, uh, maybe you have some. Of course, when when you start um, or when you decide to start your your own practice uh, at the beginning, maybe it's not even a practice; it's just you. Um, um, you of course you you have you have some ideas maybe you have some money you, you earn some money by working in previous offices etc and then maybe you have some time to 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 start to to see how how to do that so the beginning was a lot of uh, investments in terms of time of course and and, and personal investments let's say uh, we're not talking about uh, big amounts this is i think it's also a very interesting point that comes 
out from the research of Atlas. Now, um, compared with the previous generation, for instance, to initiate your own practice is much more easier and less expensive. Yeah. You don't need a space. You can work in hotel halls. You can work in uh, different places. You don't even need to rent a desk in a co-working if you want. Um, I mean, so you don't have these kind of expenses. You don't need uh, to buy necessarily computer for your employees. You have your laptop, which is not that expensive. So with very small investment, you can do your own things and mm -hmm. see what happened, at least at the beginning, of course. Yeah, the cost, um, the, the cost of entry is much, much lower these days. Yeah, yeah that's it. So, but uh, yeah, in, in our case, I would say that uh, we mainly work with uh, um, public, uh, public um, clients, which uh, are uh, uh, public fund fundings, let's say. Right, okay. uh, so uh, more, more than clients, I would say in, 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 in our case, uh, we work uh, mostly with public fundings. Uh, which um, um, comes from uh, public open course tenders, etc. Um, what I uh, think is very interesting, at least in, in our case, is that um, most of the time we don't get money from uh, the architecture sector in the most traditional way, uh, but we always try to find a way to get uh, subsidies or funds, cultural funds uh, within the, let's say, wider sector that we could uh, call the credit industry sector. Um, so um, there are many calls uh, in Italy, Spain, I believe that are also in UK and many other countries. We get funds also from the Netherlands. We work a lot with the Netherlands, etc. Which are not an uh, uh, addressed call, which are not, uh, which has not been thought uh, necessarily for architects, but they are kind of more open. So, mm -hmm. uh, calls related with the art field, the theater, um, or yeah. performance, as I mentioned, the public space, the call that I mentioned before, the project that I mentioned before in Piacenza. Um, was uh, very very open. I think that we uh, uh, was a very um, a successful in a way because uh, we didn't take so much time to prepare the the uh, the material uh, for for the call. Um, but there were I think around two hundred entries, and uh, only six uh, got a prize, got subsidies to develop the project. And, uh, and we were one of the six uh, groups and uh, the other five were not architects. So there were uh, cultural association working on, uh, um, in the, within the art field. There were some other, somebody else working, as I mentioned, in the theater, performance, etc. And then we were the only one. So I think that uh, it's very important to take your time also to uh, see that there are, or to do research also in terms of uh, uh, what the, what are the opportunities offered by uh, the market, which yeah. are, uh, and, 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 and that's uh, one of the, the, the critics that I do to architect that we are obsessed with architectural competition. Yeah, architectural competition like European, for instance. Uh, yeah, of course. European is uh, great, and uh, every two years there is this competition. So, uh, but at the end, I mean, why do you have to spend so much time to compete with others uh, when you could basically uh, develop the same idea just by doing some research? That probably you will find out that you can propose the same idea and have someone pay for it. <laughs> get some pay for it, yeah. Because, for instance, European is a is a they have, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of entries every two years. I think the first prize is twelve thousand euros, which in, is okay for an emerging practices because we. But at the end, basically, you are investing your time, and uh, you have very small chance to get the first prize because you're competing with hundred groups, and uh, European mostly um, doesn't end up in a building because they don't have funds then to. Uh, develop the project into build. So just a few European has been actually uh, built. So I mean, this I understand that doing competition is 
it's very important to create your own discourse and to test and to think uh, and, and, and I'm not saying that uh, competition or not not uh, a good way to, to do this, etc. But I think that there are also many other ways. So in our case, I also like very much to, because I, I one of the question of Atlas in the business section was, uh, uh, I've asked to the participants to, um, 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 to, te to um, suggest a couple of projects uh, uh, per year, uh, indicating, um, what I think it's very important in a way is that um, many times, of course, we have some, there are some boundaries when you have to talk about money. So uh, the, um, uh, in the online survey, the only, uh, the only question that I uh, gave the chance to answer anonymously was uh, the part of related with business. And uh, the majority of participants decided to answer anonymously. So the part in which I've asked to indicate budgets, for instance, it was many times, it just left in white because they didn't want to uh, say how much money, uh, for instance, costs building a research, how much money to get, etc. Yeah. I don't care too much about that. I mean, so for instance, I would say um, like uh, the, the, the open call that I mentioned, uh, for instance, in Piacenza, it was an open call that provided us uh, uh, 35,000 euros. Uh, and then uh, th with that 35,000 35, euros, you just kind of organize yourself. Then yeah. how, how long could you work with that? So and I think that's also very important. How do you invest your time? Uh, so 30,000, 35,000 euros means that maybe you can work, uh, I don't know, three, four months on a project and paying a couple of people and also get paid for your work and uh, then uh, also pay some other external collaborations to realize some specific part of the project, paying for the material of the installation, etc. But in three, four months, you have to be kind of very strict and say, no, I don't want to extend this to eight months or to 12 months. So um, in, in, in my case, I think that uh, sometimes I, I, I think about this because, um, as I mentioned, even if uh, I, I'm working the architectural field, uh, there's, a, 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 of course, the um, compared to those that are actually building buildings uh, uh, in, 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 uh, with IT front office, we uh, work with smaller budgets because when you work with uh, the editorial fields on research or the creative industry sector, of course, you don't have the same budget of uh, building a building of eight stores, for instance, which has, yeah. of course, a budget of two, 2 million euros, 3 million euros, 10 million euros or whatever. So we are working with budgets, let's say, between uh, 20 and 100,000 euros, depending by the project. Uh, and then uh, you, you, you try kind of uh, understand how to invest this budget to make your uh, to make profit and also to make your projects uh, economically sustainable. Um, so it, it it really depends. Um, and then uh, what I would say that yeah and also like for, yeah that, that that's a kind of a, a contradiction uh, with what I was just saying that for instance Atlas. I got uh, so involved in the project that I think I, I took twice the time that I was expecting to take. Because, uh, I mean, then we are human and we, if you like what you do, uh, you also um, understand that maybe it's worth to uh, take a few more times to... Uh, so I'm not very strict. I, I make a joke because I've been working in, a, in, a, in the Netherlands a couple of years, so Dutch people are very strict in that. So. Uh, so no, I, I'm, get, I'm getting paid for 12 hours, so I'm working 12 hours, I'm not working 13, which I think is kind of, uh, it's okay, uh, but I, I'm not that strict. I think that it's important to uh, don't extend too much the project. If you have a budget of 1,000 euros, don't work for 5,000 yeah. euros of your time, of course. Yeah. But in my case, Atlas, it was kind of that. The labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it's it's a lot. It was a lot of work. It was, uh, but yet I think that uh, since the beginning, I thought that uh, Atlas had a very uh, it was a very strong potential also for the future. So I decided to invest time 
on this. Um, uh, because yeah, um, I, 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 I think that um, at least um, even if it's not something that I probably will see in the next three months because we have just uh, launched Atlas and we're going to present the book in Rome in one week, first time officially. I think yes, it will take uh, some time. But as I mentioned, for instance, the workshops that we are developing uh, for uh, new graduates and, and, and young architects to design in practice and, and think about how would they, um, how would they like to develop their own practice in, at the beginning um, are uh, kind of the results of this research. So Atlas opened a lot of opportunities in a way. So I'm kind of almost sure that from Atlas, there will be some other side projects, which are the mm -hmm. end are uh, paying well, they, back the time that I invested uh, extra in the last well, year. Well, yeah, and, and, and this, is, this is interesting as well as, as, a, as a conversation when we talk about how to facilitate research, like how to make it work commercially and, and because there is such an interest for architects to be doing it and it's very important in our industry to be engaged in research. I mean, uh, in the UK, I'm sure they have it in, in Europe as well, but you know, you get sort of tax relief if you're, if you're engaged in research and design. So you can, okay. you know, you can, you can write it off as an, as an expense essentially. Um, yeah. and, and a lot, so much of architecture is that. Um, and it's, it's finding ways of like, you know, there are traditional practices where perhaps you're, you, you're using profits that you're making in more traditional modes of practice and then allocating that into doing more research. Or perhaps there's a way of commercially making the research available to other people for a price or for, you know, you know like publishing a book or magazines or subscription services or all these different ways of monetizing uh, and sort of, or, or using, you know, commercial sponsorship and like you, like you're talking about cultural funds and things like yeah. this. It's quite a wide way of doing it. We need to be sort of well-versed in all of them and try and test and see which one works for you. Because sometimes if you're doing something that's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, beholden to somebody else, then it might take the research in a, in a direction where you're not, you don't necessarily want it to go down. Um, on the other hand, it might take it down a direction which is even more interesting and and fascinating and it's so and it, it, it's it's yeah this is this is a conversation i'm often in and having you know the business of architecture how we how we make it how you make it work commercially how it operates in its own right as a business and i think that's and it's a very interesting and fascinating conversation and you know for architects to um start engaging like you were saying at the beginning to design their practice this is one of the questions that comes up is like how 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 does it operate monetarily what's the sort of fiscal disciplines and operations that are going to be existing within uh, a business and it's it's yeah. a very very important conversation um, i think so yeah i'm not very expert let's say in that uh, in that field i would say but uh, i think it's very very interesting it's crucial uh, sometimes you're kind of maybe too lazy to uh, uh, understand to, to 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 take some time to actually really understand these kind of things but i would i think it would help a lot to to develop your your practice at the beginning to 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 understand all these things that you just mentioned um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's also for me, it's very fascinating conversation, everything that relates with, uh, how do you, how do you uh, do your business? How do you get money? How do you get the end of the month? How do you improve, etc. Uh, in, in my, in my case, for instance, in, in fields, I've seen that uh, IT current office has been, um, slowly or I don't know, for me, it's not kind of slow for me. It was kind of okay. In the, in the last six years when I started, I remember myself six years ago, but I didn't get almost anything for, for what I was doing because I yeah. was starting. And then uh, after one year, I got some extra money and invested in an intern. And after a couple of years, I won another competition and I got the possibility to have an employee. Um, then I've been working, then adding freelancers, etc. And now, and now I can, I, I have a team of three, four people plus other experts. It could be more than that, of course. Uh, but I think it has been kind of slowly growing in a very, in a way, sustainable way because yeah. I, I kind of, so I, I'm, and, and again, to go back to the previous conversation, 
I don't have a very clear answer to what I would like. I would I I think that it would be very difficult in what I'm doing to have a team of 20 people because it's yeah. uh, you don't manage very big amounts. Uh, we're not developers and we are not interested in replace or, or having a space or finding our space in in the, the in that field. So it's going to be very difficult to pay with culture 20 salaries. Yes. Uh, so, um, and then it becomes but, very risky for you as well to operate like that. Like you, you, you know, you, you end up having to try and find or take on projects that are not of any use to you. They're just trying to yeah, feed people. Of course. Uh, uh, what I think it uh, might be interesting. It's something that I'm thinking about. Uh, the place where I'm working now is um, kind of an incubator uh, where there are also other companies. Um, and we are the one, uh, the, we are the only architects, let's say, uh, even if we are not like the, the most traditional architects, we are the only architects, architecture group. Uh, the other companies are related with other disciplines, related with architecture. So there is a fab lab uh, making things. There's uh, another company which works with 3D, virtual reality, etc. And also there is another company which are uh, experts in funding and European funding. And uh, now we are thinking how we should join forces, for instance, mm -hmm. to kind of access these kind of things. Uh, for instance, here in Madrid, I have some, some friends that are architects which, are, which have been involved in the, in, the, in, in the research of new generations since the beginning. Um, and they, they were one of those. I mean, Spain has been strongly affected by the crisis in 2008, uh, may, uh, more than other countries probably. Yeah. And um, they had been affected strongly and they had to find new ways to. So for instance, they've been start focusing themselves more in this participatory process, etc. And then after five years, for instance, a year and a half ago, they participated in, uh, in, a, in a European call for uh, European funding. I don't remember the exact amount uh, of, of funds, but a uh, few million euros, uh, which allowed them to uh, suddenly um, develop uh, urban reactivation projects uh, here in Madrid, which had the main uh, um, goal to reactivate four abandoned buildings in uh, four different peripheral areas and uh, uh, by reactivating them also create um, uh, job opportunities for the local inhabitants by introducing new functions. Uh, so, um, I mean, uh, that, that's something that I'm trying to investigate a bit because that's cultural funds uh, mm -hmm. and uh, which might allow you to uh, then grow a bit by also projects which are in a way more sustainable because uh, they provide you enough time to uh, um, to, to think, to develop, to, to, to work uh, with uh, a certain amount of money because the European funds project, I think they're a program, I mean, at least that one was a program of three years. Um, instead of uh, other smaller projects, which I mentioned before, like the one in Piacenza, which was a project of four months, or the, um, if the public events that we are now organizing in Rome for, uh, the, to present Atlas. It's going to be the sixth edition of the Festival New Generation, which also um, are in the condition to do that because we uh, applied for a call which provided us around 40,000 euros. And uh, then we can, uh, we, we can organize this event. And we, we, can, we can create a condition to, to do these kind of things and then work other three, four months. Um, new generations in a way, and that's also part of the, 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 sustain, of the sustainability. Uh, I think that uh, creating formats is also very important in this sense. Uh, the festival New Generation, when it started six years ago, was kind of a, just uh, an idea. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the first edition of the event was basically uh, with zero cost, uh, some friends or architects which were already in Milan or some, some young architects based in Milan. And then we got the location from the municipality for free, got some sponsor to cover, the, but in the end uh, it was almost zero cost. 
by doing that many times. So uh, we are kind of getting experts and we invented that format. So now it's also easier in a way to say, okay, uh, we have a network, we have a format. In these three yeah. days, we do this, this, and that. And this costs this. Yeah. Uh, and of course, when you could prove that you did that for six, seven, eight, or 10 times, it's, it's, much, it's, it's easier to get funds, also to get private clients which are interested yeah. to invest in, in a format which is kind of very clear. And at the beginning, you cannot do that. So in terms of how, to, how, do, you, how do you get money, how do you sustain or the work, this is also very important because the festival is also kind of, we organize that every year and we know that every year, more or less, it's kind of easy to find a place with certain amount of money to do that. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because there, there's always this process of testing, experimenting, figuring out, you know, defining what your proposition is, seeing if it works financially, yeah. seeing and uh, how different ways of, uh, of, of making it operate and collaborate with other people and then refining yeah. it and then repeat yeah. and rinse and kind of going back and kind of, and also continually going deeper and deeper into the sort of themes that you want to be looking yeah. into. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about some of the graphic work in the book because there is a lot of very engaging images and ways of visually representing quite complex data and information that you've gleaned. So I'm just looking here at some of these um, yeah. diagrams about, the collab about collaborations and there's a beautiful diagram in there uh, which has a number of practices it just sort of illustrates where they're from, where the countries are from, and then and then you've got and then, and then you've got these these kind of sort of maps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so how, can, you, can you tell me a little bit about how these images were put together, and the sort of thinking behind some of the, the <laughs> graphical representation in the book? Yeah, of course. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's not easy to kind of uh, explain in general terms this because, of course, uh, um, it was, uh, as I mentioned, it was a very long process. I've been working together with uh, uh, Maria Buey, which uh, has been taking care of, uh, she's a Spanish editor uh, freelance, um, uh, which has been taking care of, uh, um, let's say, wor working with us uh, during a few months uh, in, in the office uh, side by side to uh, working on this process to kind of diagram something and then uh, how to implement these diagrams with new information. And uh, so at, since the beginning, what I uh, wanted to, um, what, it, what it kind of was clear since the beginning in the research project, I think that if you, want, if you have time, better if you have money in that case we didn't have so much money but if you if you want to i think that uh, I, I like very much to uh, take my time to to think and also to before closing something of course if you have a small amount of money and a week so you have to kind of in that week you have to do that so i mean at, when the time is finished then yeah but every process i think it might uh, be implemented further always it's never closed so in this case, uh, I, I, uh, since the beginning, I, I had that kind of clear because um, all of the diagrams that you can find in the book are uh, the, representing the results of the survey online, which were, which were a lot of information. Imagine 95 practices, 30, 35 questions each. Many of those are where data, number of employees, uh, countries um, or where they were based or uh, um, external collaborators um, etc so there are a lot of information there so since the beginning I wanted to keep this process as much open as possible yeah. uh, to really develop to the, the, the best or the most interesting way to represent all of these data so the beginning it was just kind of Excel uh, which uh, were just the kind of reorganizing all of this information and uh, also try to create some connection, for instance. Uh, is there any relation with the kind of project that you developed and uh, the number of employees? Or is there any relation with uh, the way you communicate yourself or the way you use social media to communicate yourself and the number of clients that you get back from this? 
uh, operation or is there any relation with uh, the way you uh, define yourself as we mentioned as an office as a practice as a laboratory as a network etc and the way you work and then the way you for instance those that are defining themselves a network of course in the diagram in which we ask to indicate which are uh, the countries where they used to operate uh, more of course they indicate a lot of countries because as a network they uh, work with many external collaborators in locating different countries and those that are defining themselves as an office more traditional office are maybe working just within their own country or just with a couple of countries uh, etc Mm. Um, so all of this information was a very complex, in a way, process, uh, which took uh, about, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but between six and nine months, something like that, which also um, helped me a lot to um, shape the text, uh, which at the end uh, um, goes together with the diagrams. Um, so. For instance, I took a lot of time uh, also to understand uh, this is kind of a, a bit difficult um, because um, the um, selection of practices that took place in the, in the research uh, took a lot to me to kind of understand how to do that, or also how to represent that. Now, yeah. I hope I will be able to explain because it's even it's still kind of difficult to to <laughs> to clearly explain that. But basically, um, what I um, what I wanted to do through this atlas was to kind of also, as I mentioned, to uh, provide some more. I wouldn't say well, a scientific, but more kind of analytics information to what we have been doing previously. So. Um, when I started the research, when I started the Atlas, um, I found out that uh, in a very organic way, uh, the practices that I've been involved in the previous years were mainly based in the countries in which I've been maybe living or in which I operate more often. So I've been living in, uh, uh, I'm Italian, I've been living in, I'm living in Spain, I've been living in, in living in the Netherlands, in London a couple of years, etc. So I had uh, many practices from these countries, but then, uh, but I never realized that I basically didn't have almost uh, practices in the eastern part of Europe. So um, uh, many countries uh, where uh, there's a very uh, interesting activities in these terms, but I just didn't have any, um, uh, I didn't know any uh, or almost any um, interesting practice, young emerging practices there. Right. So one of the first thing was to understand how to involve these and how and, and, and why, how, how many of them, for instance, and then to kind of do that in a very analytic way. Uh, then I, I studied some research. Uh, there is one research which is uh, I think kind of famous in the architectural field, which is called, it's a research from uh, um, Mirza and Nasi uh, research, uh, which uh, um, I think it's called the architecture profession. The architectural profession right. is commissioned by the uh, European community, I think, and they do that every two years. So basically what they do is analyzing every two years the state of the architecture profession uh, number per architects, number of architects per country, how much do they get, uh, divided in age, male, females, etc., etc. So the very analytic uh, research, which is very interesting. So um, I took those data to understand how many architects per country do we have, for instance, and I found out that in Italy we are more than 150,000 out of uh, 600,000 in uh, uh, what they call Europe 32, which is not uh, Europe, uh, but it's uh, the European territory because they include also those countries which are in the European ter 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 territory, but it's not in the European community. So, but out of 32 countries, uh, the total was, uh, it is uh, 600,000 and Italy says 150,000, which is basically 25% of the total just 
in one country. From Italy. Wow. From, yeah. it's, un it's unbelievable. And then there, the second one is uh, Germany, which uh, is, also has a lot of architects. I think that around 110,000, uh, but has 20 million people more than Italy. So it, there's less uh, architects per inhabitants in, in, in that sense. And then uh, um, there's also, well, there, there's Spain, there's, I don't remember the exact uh, number per, of architects. And, per and, and are, they, are these practicing architects or are these people who have got architectural accreditations and are working elsewhere? Because I know that the culture in Italy, for example, it's much more like architecture is considered a kind of a, deg a good degree to do if you want to do a number of different professions, where in the UK, it's very much like if you do architecture as a degree, then you become an architect. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and also, as I, as I mentioned, I, I've been living in the Netherlands. And I think also in the Netherlands, if you study architecture, it's because at the end you want to be an architect, you want to practice that. But in Italy, yeah, it, it's as you said. Um, of course, uh, studying architecture uh, provides you the possibility to work in the architectural field. But then I, I don't know exactly how many, uh, but um, many, of course, there are then. Uh, doing some related things, uh, writing, working in the art field, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, art, theater, performance, etc. The, the cultural field in general, and many others. I think it's just they don't. It's something that they don't practice architecture. Maybe they just do something different. Uh, but here, I I don't have specific data. But then to to go back to what I was saying is that then I wanted to. Um, create, um, I want to uh, create a research which, uh, at least I want to create an atlas which also um, in a way represent, represent this um, distribution of architects. So then uh, yeah, taking those official data um, and I wanted that, uh, I wanted to find about 25% uh, of arch Italian architects represented in this atlas. And if uh, Germany uh, was about 17, 18%, so I wanted to have 17, 18% of German architects represented here. And I, I really made an effort to uh, find interesting emerging architects also in those countries which I didn't cover so far. Yeah. So all those Eastern European countries, etc. And then it's kind of, I think, well explained in the book because there's a, a series of data which try to explain this. And of course, it was not possible every time. Uh, it was not something that I, it, uh, it was a starting point, let's say. But then, um, for instance, uh, some uh, countries are not represented in Atlas because it was not possible to find uh, practices from those countries, for instance. Right. Or some other countries... Um, were at the beginning represented, like um, Turkey, for instance, um, I invited uh, three different practices, but no one accepted the invitation. So uh, Turkey is not represented in, 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 uh, in, um, in Atlas um, because uh, at the end, uh, the practices that I invited, they were, I don't know, not interested or too busy or uh, doing some other things to participate. So for many reasons, this is, this is kind of uh, normal. Um, so there is a map there, which uh, going back to the way we decided to develop this diagram, etc., which is a, is, a, is a map a kind of, uh, we try to represent the different countries and their um, weight in, in this map uh, represent also the number of architects that participate in Atlas and their relation with the exact number, the percentage of architects that actually practice uh, in uh, or are registered in that in that country. Uh, for instance, Italy at the end, uh, it was kind of easy to find 25% uh, of all Italian architects represented in Atlas out of 120. It is about uh, 30 practices. So it was kind of easy to find 30 yeah. practices in Italy. But Germany, for instance, uh, which is the second uh, country per num number of, uh, of architects, it was very difficult to, to find, to me at least, emerging practices based in uh, uh, Germany. Uh, and then 
uh, everything at the end find a, a is, was is, was that because in germany there's more of a commercial practice culture perhaps or i think that uh, at the end you see that in germany of course there's uh, there are more of those uh, practices and also um, there's um, many uh, very big firms uh, big practices of course with uh, 70, 80, 100 employees, which many times maybe we, we, we just don't know because they, there's, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of building, there's a lot of construction. And even though they're not uh, very uh, well-known or uh, practices, they have a lot of work. And then it's kind of more common to uh, start your own practices maybe after 35 years old uh, or 40 years old because Maybe you take 10 years to work in one of those big firms to make your own experience. So it was very difficult at the end to, uh, to find practice there. And probably it's, uh, one of the points is, is it's because of this. While in Italy, because there's almost no job opportunities, many right. uh, new graduates or young people, when they are 27, 28, yeah, they just, yeah. So there, there's a lot of young practices needed. It's very easy to, to, to find emerging practice kind of, there's a lot, uh, really. It's very easy everywhere from north to south. Um, so, or for instance, what I found kind of interesting, this kind of this kind of those intuition that I, I mentioned, which uh, at the end they've been confirmed. Of course, it was easier in a way, uh, I, the Netherlands, uh, had to be uh, following these data had to be represented by I think three or two or, or four practices a small number to uh, keep the um, proportion with the other countries but at the end I found like uh, 13 14 15 and don't remember but much more than those three of course on the one hand it because I've been living there so I, I, I know what's happening there so it was kind of easier but on the other hand then when I uh, been analyzing those practices, I found that at least in Atlas, um, I, I think that I invited 12, 13, then uh, eight or nine accepted the invitation and they are represented in Atlas. Then when you um, look more in deep, uh, then you find out that 80% uh, of the practices that have accepted to participate are not Dutch practices. So uh, they are based in the Netherlands, but there's, I don't know, a practice founded by an Italian, another one from two right. German guys, another one from one French and one Greek, etc., etc. And this is because, of course, uh, the Netherlands, uh, well, I, in, in Atlas, I try to explain this in, in, uh, in two, two points. One, it is because the Netherlands, uh, even if it's a very small country, um, has been... Uh, um, very attractive for a lot of uh, new graduates uh, in the last 20 years because of these big, uh, very interesting firms such as uh, OMA, uh, yeah. MVRDV, Meccano, etc. So there's a lot of very interesting practices which practice architecture in a very different way. So everything that you want to do uh, so uh, everything that you, you uh, every idea that you have about architecture I think that in, in the Netherlands, in a way, you, you could you know, find a, a job opportunity to, 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 to experiment yourself in these kind of practices. So and many of those, actually, when you uh, look at their biography, their CV, they've been working on those. Uh, so they started maybe working there for three, four years. And after working three, four years at OMA very intensively, they decided to stay in the Netherlands and open their own practice, even if they're not Dutch. And then there's, of course, the fiscal, let's say, aspects, because the Netherlands has a very uh, low uh, rate in terms of taxes. So yep. opening, your, opening your own business is much more convenient than doing that, for instance, in uh, Belgium which has very high uh, tax rate. Uh, I don't know exactly how much it is, but or in Italy. In Italy, besides, uh, there's not a lot of uh, work opportunity in Italy in the architecture field. In Italy, uh, the, 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 the tax rate, it's, uh, it's unbelievably high, uh, depending by how much do you get. But even if you don't get so much money, 
uh, you pay between uh, uh, 40 and 50 percent of what you get just in taxes, which is uh, not sustainable for somebody that is actually starting. Yeah. If uh, I am 27, 28, and I'm earning 20,000 euros a year, for instance, uh, then it means that uh, I just keep I just keep 10,000, which is less than 1,000 euro per month, and it's not sustainable. Yeah. Uh, in the Netherlands, it's uh, it's lower than that. It's uh, so uh, for for these reasons, I think that it's easier to to find emerging practices there. Um, and then I had to go back to the diagrams. I mean, all of this information take a lot takes a lot of time. The process is very articulate. So by drawing and then try to visualize this information, then maybe after a few weeks you have uh, all of these diagrams, kind of just the, the draft version of them, and you see all of them together, and then you find out that uh, there are some things that might be kind of implemented or maybe there's some connection connection between one diagram and the other one so you decide to just um, bring them bring together, together. Uh, and these of course uh, uh, it, it takes some time um, amazing I'm, I'm just really curious about your methods you know going into more of the methods of research the way that you've been talking to architectural practices I suppose one last question I was interested in was um, how how did you develop the questions that you were asking practices and how did the questions that you're asking architectural practices begin to evolve over speaking to over a hundred practices yeah um, there's also a process i think that at the end developed um, the online survey was was kind of in a way easy because uh, uh, through the previous uh, hundreds interviews that I've been doing uh, uh, in the previous five years, I was kind of also uh, developing a set of kind of basic questions which I used to ask to everybody. And some others, uh, of course, they are part of the process. So maybe you change some of them because you understand that they're not very interesting answers from a specific question. Mm -hmm. at the beginning you think that are interesting but at the end you see that uh, they're, they're not provoking any very interesting reaction etc so yeah. you kind of improve uh, by doing learning by doing i think it's uh, learning by doing i think it's very it's very um, um representative what we do so uh, as i mentioned i like very much to keep the research uh, process as much open as i can because i think that uh, if you have the chance to test and redo and implement and keeping this process open and you, you learn from your mistakes and then you have the chance to uh, to always improve what you're doing. Of course, sometimes you cannot do that, so, but, the, but the, 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 the idea is that uh, if, you have, if you are in the condition to do that, uh, the learning by doing process, I think it's very, it's very important in the, in, the, yeah. in the way we practice the profession. Um, and then the question, of course, uh, uh, yeah, part of the question are were already there in a way because of the previous interviews. Some others are uh, when 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 I decided to to do the survey online. Of course, it's also part of the research. Try to understand uh, which kind of question would you like. That for me is um, sorry. Uh, I, I also <laughs> I always refer to the to the Dutch because I know them. I like very much to work uh, <laughs> to work with Dutch. I'm Italian and I, I speak too much. <laughs> Dutch people uh, probably are would answer to this question in just a few words, and and they take a triple of, of the time that it would take. But um, but um, I, one of the things I particularly interested, and this is for me. An open question because every time that I uh, I start uh, this process, um, I learn something new, and every time is kind of different. But I'm trying to um, find the best way to do that is how to uh, involve uh, other people in your research process. Mm. So for me, that's kind of crucial uh, because. Uh, if you look at the project that we developed through IT Inrant Office or um, New Generations, we always um, involved, we always involved others. 
So Atlas involved 95 practices, which means that you have to be very well organized in what you ask, how you ask, why you ask that, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, timing, planning, et cetera, this is very important. You always have to learn. Um, but also, um, in, in many other projects, if you check the website of Itunion Topic, you can see that many projects uh, are um, uh, based on uh, the collaboration with others. Uh, so, and I have this um, very interesting project, to me at least, which I never published so much, but there is a website, etc. But I, because I, I find that, I found that it was in a way, um, a failure, but I learned a lot from that project, which was uh, um, a research that wanted to understand how uh, do we define ourselves as architects, right? how uh, other people, other experts understand us, how do, how, do, how do they perceive us as architects? Because I think there's a total disconnection between what we think yes. we are yes. and what the other thing we could do. So I did that uh, in a very open and uh, collaborative participatory process. Um, I decided, I think that if you want to get something interesting from somebody else, you have to demonstrate that, well, the base was, if you want to involve somebody, you cannot just ask for a favor you have to demonstrate that you, you, ha you, you have something to give back, you have to, something to offer, you have something to... So I didn't have uh, uh, money to pay somebody to, to do something. So I say, if I can demonstrate that I took some of my times, I invested some of my times to do something for you, maybe then you will uh, be more uh, interested to participate in what I'm thinking to do. So uh, I made a selection of 50 architects and uh, 50 groups from many countries. And I prepare, uh, well, here we, we prepare 50 postcards uh, specifically um, realized for each one of them. All of them were different. And each postcard um, was presenting the same question, which was, uh, what is the role of the architects uh, in contemporary society? Something very general. And we have asked them to answer this question in the more open way possible. So with a text, with a diagram, with uh, a collage, uh, many things. So I thought that uh, by taking a few hours to prepare each one of these postcards, because the postcard was very well prepared, etc. And also to facilitate, uh, facilitate as much as possible uh, their part. Um, so uh, in each postcard, we... Um, take care of uh, um, what's the name of the small things that you use to send postcards the, the stamp. stamp yeah so we bought stamps from each country so if you are Polish and you receive my postcard your postcard already had the Polish stamp because I wanted them to send back to me their answers so I didn't want them to uh, invest their time. I just wanted to answer the question. I didn't want to lose time to go to the shop, buying the yeah. uh, stamp, etc. So that part was very successful, and and then uh, there's uh, their answers are amazing. So it was it worked very well. So to uh, the second part of the project, then I just taking two minutes and then I. OK, um, I wanted to develop another way to involve the rest. The project was called Architects versus Rest of the World. So um, the rest of the world were a new selection of 50 experts from different disciplines, which I wanted to involve in uh, uh, order to understand what, what do they think about our architect profession? How do, we, how do, how do they perceive the, uh, our profession? And to do that, I decided to experiment with another format, which is uh, I decided, well, first I asked to everybody, they were interested, etc. But then the idea was to open uh, um, 50 different WhatsApp groups uh, and uh, ask to each uh, um, expert involved to uh, starting a dialogue with uh, an architect, starting from the answers that uh, they provided through the postcards and just to 
open up a bit the conversation. Oh, I like it. Right. So you're, you're actually facilitating conversations between different groups of architects and people. I've That's re- through WhatsApp between people that they never meet before. I mean, the, the Polish architect with uh, Spanish experts in the cultural field or the French architect with uh, somebody working in the dance or theater in Italy, etc. So mm. I opened these 50 groups and that was very a failure because uh right okay i I, decided, I i thought that uh, the way you use uh, a tool such as whatsapp is the way that everybody used that then i found out that, uh, that no everybody used whatsapp in a different way so some people were very scared about writing something because uh, if i'm writing something wrong and then you're going to publish this this is gonna kind of stay there and i i'd want to take that risk Somebody else was using WhatsApp, like chatting with a friend, a lot of emoticons or uh, <laughs> short messages at three in the morning, uh, maybe because they having a beer with friends. It's, ah, look, uh, just taking this picture and remember about what we've been talking two days ago, et cetera, et cetera. Other that were taken very seriously with uh, statements, uh, philosophical statements, et cetera. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it was kind of funny in a way, but at the end, the result was uh, totally unexpected and not that rich as I thought. Yeah. So this is something that I, I always thinking about as example, because when you work with others and you want to involve others, I think there's no a very clear receipt. Mm. Uh, you always have to try to develop the best format that fits with that specific, which as I mentioned at the beginning, this is very um, exciting, but also very uh, stressful or very uh, difficult because I don't think there's a way to do that. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I mean, you can, you can obviously tell I've really enjoyed picking your brains and talking to you about your research and congratulations on the book. It's absolutely, you know, it's absolutely fascinating. And, you know, for me personally as well, being able to talk to somebody who's been involved in researching this kind of world, you know, this type, this, this kind of behind the scenes part of architectural practice is really, really interesting. So just being able to go deep into your methodologies and the ways that you've been doing it has been very, very valuable. So thank you so much for your, for your time. How, how do people, people want to read the book? How do they get hold of it? There's a, um, we started the pre-order a few weeks ago and now it's officially, uh, it's, it's possible to, to buy the book. Uh, we have a, a, a big cartel, um, account in which, uh, uh, you can buy the book, which is, uh, I think, I can check it out right now because I don't remember. Is uh, uh, Let me check. Maybe I can also restart this part if you, Big Cartel. You can s- send me the link and I'll, I'll put it into the yeah. information. And I was thinking if you wanted, this maybe out of the, the interview, if you, uh, if you want, we can also, what we do, this kind of thing is also we create a sort of a, a discount code for those that are interested to, maybe we can create a code for those yeah. that are maybe, uh, so a 10% dis- uh, discount or 50% uh, discount, something uh, like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think our listeners would love that. Okay, sounds good. So I will send you the link and I'll, uh, and I, and I'll let you know. Wonderful, great. Thank you so much you. for your time, Jim. Thank you very much. Really, I enjoyed really it very much the talk. And I, and I look forward to doing the next one and speaking more. Yeah, me too. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to book your 15-minute chat with me by using the link in the information. I look forward to speaking with you. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.